Hey guys, it's Braden here for GSHelper.com, and today I'm going to show you how to build this puzzle game inside GameSolid Creator. Now this is the release candidate, so if you don't have this yet, you can go to GameSolid's website and download this. It's available to everyone, so uh, even those of you who are not pro members can still download this and use all of these functions uh, that we're going to be showing you today. Um, you see a lot of these puzzles in point-and-click adventure games, and pretty much... Uh, what you have to do is press the rocks or tiles in a certain order to complete the puzzle or to unlock a door or something like that. So here's the file I will be putting up on gshelper.com that you guys can download. Um, it has all the art and everything, but we're going to be doing this from scratch as well. Uh, but I just want to kind of show you what we'll be making. Uh, in the bottom left, you'll see this little cheater icon where it shows you which buttons need to be pressed. Uh, so if we press these and get the correct sequence, it'll tell us that we have solved the puzzle. However, even if we uh, tap another one, then it'll tell us that something's wrong, we haven't completed it yet, which is true because this is the answer. Um, everything needs to be exact. You can undo uh, by tapping the tiles again. Um, and so it's all instant. We're using writable tables, the new table functions, um, and table to table expressions. So this should be uh, a good tutorial. So let's let's go ahead and dive in. I've created a blank project here set to iPad landscape. Uh, I already have some of the art imported in um, for this demo. Uh, you can create your own art or just use actor and just change the colors of those actors. Uh, either way is fine. So first we're going to go into the tables tab and we're going to create two tables. The first one we're going to name entered answer. The second one, uh, puzzle answer. Let's go into the entered answer table and we're going to create a three by three uh, table. So three rows by three columns and they're all going to be integer types. Okay. Now we're going to leave this blank because this is the table we're going to be writing to to uh, give information here. So let's go back home into the tables tab, into the puzzle answers, and we're going to do the same th thing. Uh, three rows, three columns, integers, except this is, we're going to, uh, this is where we're going to put our answer. So zero means that the tile is not pressed. One means that the tile is pressed. So these could also be booleans, it doesn't really matter, but uh, we're doing integers right now. So let's use that answer we had in the demo uh, that I showed you just a minute ago. So we had kind of this X sequence here. Okay, so if you wanted to change the sequence, you would just add ones or remove ones and add zeros. Uh, and, and the cool thing about this with tables is that you can create you know a 10 by 10 or a 5 by 5 pretty easily. It's just adding more rows and more columns and then you know adding those actors to the scene. So now that we have our table set up, let's go into the scene, and I'm going to create one attribute we're going to be using a little bit later. It's going to be a Boolean attribute, and this is how we're going to trigger that the puzzle has been answered. I'm just going to call it game over, and again, we'll be using that in a couple minutes, but I just want to make sure that we have it before uh, we dive into the code. Let's create an actor, and we're going to name it tile. Let's enter that actor and add our unpressed block image. We're going to create three self attributes for this actor. They're all going to be integer attributes. We're going to name the first one tile state and leave it at zero. We're going to name the next one row and the next one column or col for short. Okay, now what we need to do is tell the game to write the state of this tile, whether or not it's pressed, uh, when we touch this actor. So first we're going to create a rule, and we're going to say when touch is pressed, now we have to change the state of this actor uh, so the game knows whether it's pressed or not. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change self tile state to 1 minus self tile state. Now this is the same as uh, if you did something like this, uh, tile state plus one 
percent too. It's exactly the same thing, except this is easier and more efficient uh, to use. Pretty much what it's going to do is change this integer attribute from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1, and I'll show you that in a minute. So that's how we change the tile state. Now we're going to grab a change table value. And this is how we're going to write to the table. We're going to change the game.enteredAnswer table, which row? Well, this is going to be the row that corresponds with this actor. So self.row. For column, we're going to do self.col or column. And this, the value is going to be the state of this actor. So self tile state. And this can be 0 or 1 or 0 or 1, um, whichever state it's in. Okay, now we're going to create a rule that says when attribute self tile state equals 0, which means that it's not pressed, we're going to change the image to this unpressed tile. Otherwise, if it is pressed, we want to change the image to make it look like it's been touched or tapped. So we're going to change it to this darker tile. Okay, let's back out and we're going to drag six actors, I'm sorry, nine actors onto the scene to create a three by three grid. Now I'm not going to be picky about the alignment of these uh, because this is a demo. You can go ahead and take your time to uh, make sure these are all aligned properly. But just so you guys get the basic idea, Okay, so I'm going to be pausing the video here in a minute on my end, and you should as well. But first, what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do. We're going to open up each actor and change the self.row and column attributes. So this is row 1, column 1, because this is the first actor. We're going to open the next one. We're going to go right to left, or left to right. Um, tile state, we don't need to change that. Row is still row 1 column 2 because this is the second actor in row 1. Um, so you're going to go ahead through all of these actors and change the attributes to uh, match pretty much the table. So this is row 1, this is row 2, this is row 3. So for this row you would be uh, row 2, column 1, row 2, column 2, row 2, column 3, row 3, column 1, and so on. So go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to pause it as well so I can do this um, and then come back when you're finished. Okay, we're back. Uh, I asked you to go into each actor and change the self attributes to match the table. So hopefully you have done that. Now what we're going to do is create a new actor and we're going to name this round rules. This is the actor uh, that I create in every project. It pretty much controls my game. So everything that has to do with a scene change or uh, deciding when the level is complete goes in my round rules actor. So here's what we're going to do. This is how we're going to detect whether or not the entered puzzle is the answer to the puzzle. Uh, if you open your condition and change it from actor receives event, like you would change it to an attribute, you'll notice two different new conditions. Um, we have numeric and text expressions. Because we're dealing with integers, we're going to choose numeric expressions. And right off the bat, you'll see that we have two um, expression editor buttons on either side of the condition. Uh, so this allows us to reference a table to a table, uh, which is very nice. What we're going to do is we're going to insert the table merge values function. Now if you haven't seen this video tutorial already on how to use this function, I would recommend pausing the video uh, and, and go watching that video and then coming back because I won't be ex able to explain exactly what I'm doing. Um, I assume that you have watched that video, so uh, you kind of know what I'm doing here. Okay, for the table, we're going to be doing game.enteredPuzzle. We are checking a row, so we want to do row. We're going to be doing row 1, so target row column, row 1, start range, column 1, end range, uh, column count. Separator, we're just going to add two quotes because we don't want anything separating the numbers. So we're going to say when this equals the answer. So what we're going to do is because it's going to be pretty much the same expression, we can open the first expression, highlight everything, and drag it over to the second. And all we need to do is change the 
uh, tables. So instead of entered answer, we're going to do puzzle answer. And there we go. That's our first uh, condition. We need three total, so we're going to add another condition. Numeric again. And again, it's going to be pretty much the same expression. So open up the first one. Drag this in. We're going to do enter table or enter answer table, but instead of checking row one, we're going to check row two. Okay, open the expression editor on the right side and copy the first one over. Again, instead of changing or checking row one, we're going to check ch uh, row two. Okay, and one more condition. Instead of row two, we're going to be checking row three. So change that 2 to a 3, open up the answer, highlight everything and drag it over, change that to 3. Okay, so when the row 1 of the entered puzzle equals the answer, and when row 2 equals the answer for row 2 and row 3 equals the answer of row 3, uh, that means that the tables are exactly identical. So what we're going to do is change game over to true because that means that what they have entered is exactly the um, answer for the, the puzzle. So we're just going to change game over to true. Now we have to open otherwise and copy and paste game over to false because if they complete the puzzle and then undo it's still going to show true. So we want to make sure that we change the game over to false uh, if they go ahead and change that later on. Okay, we're about done. I'm just going to go ahead and create one more actor and we're going to drag the display text behavior in there and we're going to display game dot game over. Give it a quick color back out, drag it onto the scene, stretch it across and we'll go ahead and preview. Now remember what the answer was. The answer was this X symbol or shape. So we'll go ahead and tap. And it's still false. Interesting. Maybe that wasn't the answer that I entered. Let's check. Puzzle answer. It is. Let's go inside the tile. Okay. Looks like everything's good. Might be in the round rules. This is a bug, but we'll go ahead and just figure out what's going on. Enter table to one, two, three, one, two, three. Puzzle answer, puzzle answer. Game over to true, game over to false. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, see what's wrong. It's probably just a little change attribute somewhere, and I will continue when I find the problem. Okay, dumb mistake. Nothing was wrong, but I forgot to drag the round rules actor onto the scene. Uh, I do that every once in a while, especially when I'm trying to focus on a tutorial. So, okay, when we drag that onto the scene and push it off to the side a little bit, we can go ahead and do our symbol, and you'll see it turns to true. Otherwise, if we press it again, it'll turn to false because we have not completed the puzzle. Um, so it doesn't matter which way you actually do this. Uh, you can enter the puzzle in any way, but it'll turn still turn to true. Uh, so that's about it actually. Uh, it's pretty simple as you can see with the new functions and the table to table expressions. Um, definitely much simpler than it would have been without writable tables or these new uh, expressions. Um, so I hope this has been insightful. Again I'm gonna put this up on gshelper.com, the completed version, uh, so that way you can go ahead and see how I did that little uh, cheat icon in the bottom left. Uh, pretty much it's exactly the same thing as we did with the larger tiles, except they're smaller. And they just change their image depending on the state in the puzzle. Um, but again, if you can't figure that out, you can go to gshelper.com and download that for free. Uh, it'll be up there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope you guys use it in your games. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.